We made these little devices that precisely feed electronic components so that they can be picked and placed onto a circuit board using the Lumen PNP. The ones that we made work with tape that is 8 and 12 millimeters wide. This works great, but when we tried to do the same thing for wider tape, it didn't work at all. Wider tape uses a strong adhesive to hold the film onto the tape that gets caught up in the gears, and it's really hard to wrap this big film around the feeder to get into those gears to peel it. So today, we're gonna crack this nut. Wider tape needs a different system, so that's exactly what we're gonna make. If you're new here, a few years ago I started a project around an open source pick and place machine meant for assembling circuit boards, and then I started a company around selling them. If you wanna start the whole saga from the beginning, you can click here to catch up. So the way the current feeder works is it has the tape go straight in and across, and when the film peels up, it wraps around that tape path down into the gears. This means that we can put the peel motor and all the gears that actually peel the film underneath the tape path. I think the way to pull this off is to get rid of the film wrapping. It works just fine for 8 and 12 millimeter tape because it's thin and it doesn't really crinkle up as you wrap it around and guide it down into the gears. But for wider tape, we need a much simpler path. So this is the early prototype of a 24 millimeter feeder. So you can see the film comes out and tries to wrap around, but it just does not work how it should. Sometimes that adhesive will stick onto the gears and it'll grab and it won't properly feed. And also 24 millimeter tape has deeper parts. So we have to wrap the film around a bigger channel to then get to these peel gears. It is hard to get that geometry working consistently. What I wanna do instead is have the film peel straight back and put all the peel mechanism up top, above where the tape comes in. This is gonna mean it's nice and smooth, there's no bending, it just folds straight back into the gears and gets peeled straight down. So I have some thoughts about how I wanna do this, so I'm gonna hop into FreeCAD and I am going to start from scratch. Okay, I have a test print that's like not actually intended to work, it's really just kind of a fit check. This is the new tape path here. Tape comes in from this bottom angle, up into the flat here, and then kicks out the backside. And then the peel motor's up top. This cavity here is where all the components on the PCB will go. And then the peel gears will sit up top here. So when the film peels straight out like this, it goes in the peel gears and kicks straight back. No twisting or turning, just one fold into the gears and straight back out. And the peel gears are cool. This is what we call the peel gear frame assembly that comes on the eight and 12 millimeter feeders. It is a single black print with two gears attached into it and they have a positive interface. So there is actually pressure between these two gears and this is a very slight flexure that will allow this to slip a little bit when you overdrive the film. This system works really well, so I'm trying to stick with this for 16 and 24, and this is what I came up with for that. It's so weird looking. It will sit like this on top of the feeder. So the peel motor will sit inside here, the worm gear will interface with the gear in this little opening, and then the film gets fed in between these two gears and out the backside. We still have the flexure that we did in the eight and 12 millimeter. This whole bit can rotate up just a little bit with this flexure point. And the gears themselves do not have any interface on the edges. There is no grip on those sides, only in the middle. And this is to make sure that the adhesive doesn't actually stick to the gears. I also made a little cutout on the top gear, right in between, right in the center. And the reason that I did this is so that we can have like a little tongue ride in that groove and pull any film out. So even if it does get a little stuck, this will help guide it up and out of the way so it does not stick to the gear. It's so weird. It's so big. Chonk. Chonky boy. But before I invest too much more time in designing this whole feeder, I don't actually know if this new peel mechanism is going to work yet. And I don't wanna spend all this time designing this thing that is dead in the water. So I have isolated the peel mechanism in this. This is just the backside of the wide feeder and I lobbed off the rest of it so I just print this little bit that's just enough to test if the peel mechanism works. I didn't even bother with fasteners putting this together. I just glued the peel gear frame on top. I just need to gut check if this is even remotely going to work before I put all this more time into it. This is a trick that Lucian uses all the time of like bringing a model into the slicer and just chopping away <laughs> a whole bunch of it so it prints really quick to test a tiny little aspect of it and you don't have to wait for a whole new iteration to print. I can check and validate it quickly and then move on. So I have some 24 millimeter film here and I'm gonna power this motor with the same voltage that we drive it on the feeder motherboard and we're gonna see how well it works. All right, come here. <laughs> That's so cool. I cannot stop that. Cool. All right, let's try it with some film now. 
that is great. I can still get a little slip if I really pull on it. There it goes, which is exactly what I want. That's why it has the flexure in it, but it is putting up a fight. All right, let me see if I can actually get it on the adhesive. It's not sticking. That's awesome. <laughs> so cool. Okay, that's great. That worked exceptionally well. It had a good amount of grip on the film, definitely enough to peel it off, but also if I pulled really hard on it, it would slip, which is the whole thing of this mechanism where the film can slip through if it needs to. Also, the adhesive did not stick to the gears. Even when I ran the adhesive section of the film right in between the gears, it still didn't stick. This is pretty new film that I pulled off a fresh roll, so the adhesive is still pretty strong here, but I will still leave the edges open because I don't want to risk it. <laughs> if I can avoid having interface with the adhesive, I definitely want to. All right, this is convincing enough to me that I think this is a valid approach. It seems like this will work well. And now I will bother going through and like actually fleshing out the design and spending a little bit more time making it good. Sweet, sweet, let's go, let's go. It is also becoming increasingly apparent to me I'm going to have to have a different PCB for this. The PCB for our existing eight and 12 millimeter feeders is like very much designed around this architecture of the film peeling being underneath the tape path. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly hop in a KiCad and keep the schematic exactly the same, but just change the layout so I can put a PCB on this face and have the components be where it's not gonna get in the way of this new design. Just something that I can use to test. All right, let's go into KiCad and bang out a new layout. All right, I've got my board spun up. First, we're gonna do a quick magic smoke check. It should be fine because I didn't change the schematic at all. This is just a rerouting of the existing feeder board that there are thousands of. So it should be okay, but you never know. And then if nothing blows up, I will try and program it and make sure motor spin and all that stuff. And then we can drop it into the rest of the feeder. And I've also been working on more CAD improvements. So I'll get those printed out and then we'll try and put the whole thing together. Okay. There we go. I could try and power this just like how you power any other feeder by mounting it onto a rail on a lumen. But when it's a new board, I like doing it on the power supply so I can inspect it and probe different voltages. You kind of have to have it attached to a frame to mount it that way. So I just soldered a couple little jumpers so I can connect it pretty easily. Okay, here we go. Nothing feels hot. That is excellent news. 3.3, there's our 10 volts. Okay, cool. We are in good shape here. Sweet. Okay, now we're gonna try and put firmer on it. I always use my Blackmagic probe. It is like the best ARM debugger and programmer ever. And I have the port on the back for that. All right, here we go. Oh, and I should get some motors connected to it too so we can actually test it. Okay, two motors. Let's try it. I think we're good. Upload. Oh, it found it. Okay. Yes! Let's go! Let's go! So it works the exact same way as a normal feeder. Tapping forward will peel and then drive a very tiny amount forward on the wheel. You can barely see the wheel move in there. It's only moving two millimeters of tape at a time. And then of course the peel motor's freaking out, spinning around all over the place. And then pressing and holding will drive. <laughs> okay, sweet! It like should have done this. <laughs> I didn't change anything about the schematic, so it like would have been weird if it didn't, but something can always go wrong. <laughs> it's all doing what it's supposed to do. Now is the most fun part and in integrating all of this together into a working unit. I'm so excited. I I'm so stoked this works. I have been trying to land wide feeders for like 
two years now. <laughs> I feel so like foolish. I kept trying to do this wraparound system and keep it all in lockstep with the one U, the one unit wide feeders, eight and 12 that we've been shipping for years. And the minute that I change the architecture and flip how the film peeling happens, it works. Ah. I'm still glad that I spent all that time approaching the other ones because it did teach me a lot about how this process works and what is actually different about wider tape than the other ones that we've been supporting for a long time now. This feels like the right approach. This feels like the right way to do this. I now see the path, right? Like now I can see actually how this all comes together. And like from here, it's very clear to me how this becomes shipping 16 and 24 millimeter feeders. <sighs> which was not the case before. <laughs> but this is still just a prototype. There's still a lot of stuff I have to tweak about this before it is ready for that point. There's actually one part of this feeder that I have not even designed yet, really. And that is what I'm gonna call the pick window. So when you're designing a feeder, you need to make sure that it's robust to different thicknesses of tape. No matter what thickness of tape you feed in, you're going to have to make sure it interfaces with the indexing wheel that actually drives the tape in some capacity. What we did for eight and 12 millimeter feeders is we use the exit curve of the wheel to apply a pressure on the tape down into the wheel. The wheel sticks up into that curvature and it pinches the tape into that, provides a positive force downwards and makes sure that the tape interfaces well with the wheel. So we kind of use the flexibility and the springiness of the tape as the flexible member that does the positive interfacing with the wheel. It's pretty cool. But with the wider feeders, I'm trying something different. And now the wheel isn't going to be along an exit curve, it's along a flat of the tape. This means that there's generally less friction and less interface between the wheel and the tape, which is a good thing. But it also means that the tape can wiggle and wobble around and it doesn't have that positive pressure. So we need to find some way to apply a gentle pressure down onto the tape that makes sure it has a positive engagement with the wheel. This clip from my testing shows why this is necessary. If there is not something pressing down, the tape will bow up out of the way and then it'll lose step with the teeth. So I'm currently experimenting with a couple different ways to do this and apply this positive pressure downwards. There might be able to be some part of the drive motor cover, this yellow piece here, that helps hold it down. And I'm also looking at like a laser cut spring steel flexure that presses down onto the tape as well with an opening for the pick window where you actually pick the part out. If you have ideas about how you think this would best work, please let me know in the comments. I'm curious what you think, how I should go about doing this. I do think a little spring steel piece that gets pressed into the print and applies constant downward pressure is a pretty clean solution. But that aside, it's mostly just tweaks. There's definitely some things I wanna change with the PCB layout and tolerance fit issues, all these kinds of little things. A lot of DFM stuff for making it easier to manufacture here at Opulo. I also really wanna add a feature on the other side of the peel gear frame that helps hold it in place a little better. Right now it's being held in place pretty well with just two screws on one side, but these feeders are wide. <laughs> and there's a fair amount of cantilever here where this could rock back and forth. And because we are applying a positive pressure downwards into the peel gear inside the body of the feeder. I'm trying to figure out a cool geometry where we can kind of pop it in and then lock it in place with a couple screws. Actually, let me show you. So here's the old style 16 that we never shipped using the old wraparound film method. And it has a huge peel gear frame on the back. If I undo, you can see I did something cheeky. This actually pivots out like that. There's a little curve on this side and then a matching curve on the inside. So if you match them up, drop them in, pop it in place. Now those two screws just lock it and keep it from rotating out. Screws only on one side are necessary to hold it nice and solidly secured across the entire width of the feeder. This is the same way that we added the cartridge lock door for the paste extruder. So I wanna do the same thing for the wider feeders. To everyone that has been waiting for 16 and 24 millimeter feeders, thank you for your patience. It took a lot longer than we thought because we figured we were just gonna be able to take the existing architecture of eight and 12 and just make it wider. And while it does like kind of work, it wasn't the right approach. It's not what we wanted to ship, but this feels right. Also, if you want to stay up to date with what is happening at Opulo and what we're working on, stuff about our lead times, not stuff that I put in these YouTube videos, but more about the company stuff and where things are at in terms of progress there, you should definitely go check out the Opulo YouTube channel where I now make a monthly update video and blog post about what's going on here, the current status of new projects, including information about this. So if you want to stay up to date about what we're working on, I won't necessarily always make a video about it on this channel, but the popular one, I do keep up to date now. And if you need a bunch of boards made, check out the Lumen PMP. There's a link in the description and a link here to go check it out. It's a killer machine and we do have eight and 12 out already. <laughs> and hopefully 16 and 24 millimeter feeders very, very soon. But most of your parts are gonna be eight and 12. That's why we ship those first. And you can get those right now and make a whole bunch of boards in-house for prototyping or production like we do here. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.
Let's do it. That was nothing. That was weird. <laughs> Why did you do that? This is hell. This is hell on earth. You should definitely go check out the Opulo YouTube channel. I swear to God.